I want to go back to multi-objective linear optimization using pop and Python. Um, I'm going to look at this example that I um, stated here and where I have two linear objectives and two linear constraints. Um, this is an example in continuous space um, with non-negativity constraint. This um, problem um, can be solved and I already showed an approach for this by dividing the problem into sub-problems, meaning that in the first optimization run, we will maximize only the first objective and ignore the second objective. Then in a second optimization run, we will maximize the second objective, but subject to an additional constraint of achieving the optimal outcome of the first optimization run. That means we want to achieve the optimal outcome or the maximum value for the first objective. This, of course, has strong impact on the uh, second objective. In most cases, it means that we actually do not have any um, room for further optimization um, when considering the second objective, simply by the nature of the solution space. That means the first optimization run more or less already defines the value that the second objective can take. Therefore, one approach I want to show in this video is to use the same logic of dividing the problem into subproblems. So we start by solving a subproblem here that considers only the first objective. The optimal outcome will be 30. So the maximum value of the first objective will be 30. Then I restate um, the problem. I now consider only the second objective. I have all my previous constraints and I have this additional constraint of achieving at least 30 considering the first objective. But I multiply 30 with beta and beta can take any value between zero and one. That means I am willing to deviate to some extent from the optimal outcome to the objective one. Since I also want to be able to optimize objective two to some extent. I am implementing this approach here in Python using pulp. So I'm importing pulp. I'm also in, uh, importing pyplot from matplotlib since I want to do some visualization. Since I want to do some visualization, I want to also import pandas and pandas builds on NumPy, so I'm also importing NumPy. The reason why I'm importing pandas is I want to use some data frame to which I can store um, outcomes of my um, optimization runs. What I want to do is I want to loop through various values of beta with a step size of 0 0.01. So basically each incrementation or each iteration will increment beta with 1%. Um, and I want to store the, the optimal outcome of each um, optimization run considering the different values of beta into a data frame. So I'm declaring here a data frame that is empty but has four defined columns with the names beta, x1 optimum, x2 optimum and objective value. And then I'm defining my two optimization variables using the pulp library. Um, I'm adding to them a lower bound of zero. I'm declaring my first subproblem um, here. I'm also giving it a name called first subproblem. So this will be the problem that only considers the first objective. And using pulp, I state that it is a maximization problem. Using pulp grammatics or pulp syntax, I'm adding the first objective as an objective function. Then I'm adding the two linear constraints and then I can go ahead and solve the problem which returns me a solution. I wanna have the optimal objective function value of um, that solution, which will represent the maximum value that I can achieve for objective one. And this I store into the variable optimal object one. For this I use pulp.value. Now I go ahead and 
remodel um, my problem such that now I will solve this um, problem which considers only the second objective and considers the optimal outcome to the first optimization run to some extent where this extent will be beta in this case beta is represented by the step size um, or rather this value i which will be incremented by the defined step size and for each iteration i'm restating the problem i'm adding the uh, second objective as the objective function and i'm adding the two previously known constraints and an additional constraint which states that objective function number one needs to be greater or equal to the optimal outcome of the first optimization run times i divided by 100 which then in, is basically my factor beta i can go ahead and solve and i then store the optimal outcome uh, or the solution to this problem into my data frame, meaning that my data frame will now contain after this loop um, the information for each value of beta, what the optimal solution to the second sub problem was and what the optimal value of objective two was. And this is what I visualize now in here using the uh, PyPlot library or PyPlot um, syntax and the result is this graph here which shows me beta on the x-axis and on the y-axis i can see the optimal objective function value of objective two um, in or depending on the, the value of beta now if we reflect upon this it does make sense that objective two has its highest value when beta is equal to zero reason for that is if we look at our second sub problem the first objective function or the first objective has only positive coefficients and we have a non-negativity constraint so x1 and x2 cannot take any negative values meaning that if my constraint value is zero then this constraint will really not be binding and it will not in any way prevent um, or um, limit uh, my uh, the range of possibilities of maximizing objective two now as beta increases this uh, constraint might at some point become binding and constraint uh, my solution space in a way that i can no longer find the theoretical optimum of objective two um, and this is in this case uh, somewhere around um, beta equals 50% um, so you can see here basically our um, in, in a visualization you can see here the trade-off problem that we want to to solve and depending now on the nature of the objectives you could decide um, where you want to place your beta value um, and this might then in the specific project be something you need to decide in the video description you can find a link to my blog post uh, where i posted this um, coding example in python and um, yeah you can go ahead and copy paste and try to to um, play with it a little bit yourself uh, in python